Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. Kind of a wacky Monday. Schedule's way off. I'm recording this later than I normally do. Um, I got to go in and work with the 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. crew at iFast. So that was cool to see some people that I haven't seen in a while. But it does put a uh, um, a monkey in the wrench, so to speak, in regards to the schedule, but we're, we're very, very cool, and I'm excited about today's Q&A question, so let's dig in. It comes from Alex, and Alex says, regarding a heel raising strategy during squatting, in this case, not using a heel lift, but seeing uh, someone's heels lift when they descend into a squat or a jump, I've seen this commonly in children and adolescents, and more recently in some adults, is this an example of individuals who cannot delay the max propulsive moment? and need to better control the early to mid stance phase. Alex, you are on point on this one. Um, yes, every time we see these, these heels elevate, like when you're watching a squat, or even when you're watching someone walk, you'll see the, the, the early heel lift. What you have is somebody that, that cannot create this yielding strategy posterior that is the requirement of lowering a center of gravity or delaying uh, the propulsive phase so we can get the tibia over the foot as we're walking. Now, here's what I'd also offer you, Alex, is, is that under most circumstances, squatting requires a, tr a much more significant yielding strategy than, than gait does. Um, so it, they are probably achieving some form of max propulsion during gait, but they're going to acquire it somewhere else. It's not gonna be in the foot, as you have, have so, so well identified. Um, chances are they're gonna do it somewhere else. So. When we talk about max propulsion, we need we need relative motions to to capture the position for uh, max propulsion. So some people are going to try to try to do that in different places if they can't move through their typical external rotation to internal rotation to external rotation strategies. And so some people try to do it through their big toe, and so we call that a hallux valgus. Some people will try to do it through their knee, and so we call that a knee valgus. Um, some people will try to to reorient the pelvis. So when I see somebody with an anterior orientation of the pelvis, what that is is the pelvis moving up over the over the, the femur. So I, I orient the acetabulum such that it's a substitution for, for the lack of internal rotation that I need to achieve this max propulsive strategy. So like I said, so they are achieving it it's somewhere. Um, now, let's suppose I do have these compressive strategies posteriorly where well, they're going to shove my center of gravity forward. So in, in many cases, I'm going to need a, a strategy in the ankle and the foot that keeps me from tipping over forward. And so this is where you're going to see some, some concentric overcoming um, activity um, in, the, in the musculature, especially down in the, in the foot and the ankle that are going to prevent me from coming forward. So a lot of times this is what you're also going to see. So this is why the heels come up when they walk. This is why the heels uh, come up uh, when they squat. But this is also one of the reasons why um, the heels elevated stuff in the gym kind, kind of works. So uh, if I give you a representation of the foot, so if you have an early foot, we're gonna have a, a, a tibia that's gonna be in, in relative external rotation. I'm gonna have an arch that's up rather high and I'm gonna have a, a toe on the ground so I get this really, really high arch. Well, if that arch stays up to, because this is a center of gravity issue, I can't translate the tibia over the foot because to do that, the arch has to go down. And so I have this arch that comes up. So my alternative strategy then is if I just elevate, if I elevate the heel, so, so this would be where the foot would, would rest. If I drop the toes down and keep the heel elevated, I've essentially dropped the arch out of the way. And so now I can actually translate my tibia forward. So now I can capture the yielding strategy at the beginning of the movement. So if I was doing a heels elevated squat or some form of split squat with heels elevated, what I've done is I've allowed myself to reduce the overcoming element of this concentric uh, strategy posteriorly. I've created a yielding strategy, which is the expansion, which is the, the delay that I needed to acquire to allow this tibia to translate over. And so again, that's why we start with heels elevated under these, these circumstances. So the people are telling you exactly what they need. I don't need to throw people on the table and measure. I just need to understand the representation that I'm seeing. So from here, once I have this yielding strategy captured, um, whether I have to adapt it with, with the heels elevated, then I gotta start thinking training strategies. So again, I have to, I have to promote 
the reduction of the anterior orientations that are throwing the center of gravity forward. I have to overcome the, the compressive strategies that are limiting my anterior posterior expansion because if I don't have posterior expansion, I don't have a yielding strategy to help me delay this max propulsion. Um, like I need to. So again, you go from heels elevated to a front foot elevated and then teach them to translate the tibia over the foot with a reduced load. So now I can start to capture these relative motions from the, the ground up. And then I eventually progress to increasing the load over over the, the, the front foot, if you will, um, to allow them to, to learn how to maintain their ability to capture these relative motions under um, heavier loads, higher forces, etc. So Alex, great question, really common. Um, I think this, that this is um, a, a, a great way to start the week. Um, hopefully this doesn't turn into like the, the foot and the squat week like, like we, we had before. We'll get some variety in here, but this is a great way to start because I, I think it's a really common uh, question that a lot of people have. So thanks, Alex. Have a great day. Um, let's start off a great week and I'll see you tomorrow.